The following telephone recordings were made in September of 1979. This is a tape of the Raleigh step-by-step -step in the downtown building. Being recorded in September 79, it's a fairly late phone tape. However, this local calling area has hardly changed at all since the early 70s. And so even though this is a fairly late recording, not much is different than it would have been, say, eight or nine years earlier. I moved to Raleigh in mid-1979 because I was working as a disco DJ. And, uh, of course, I wanted to get two lines, each of which was served out of a different central office entity. So I had one step-by-step -step line and one crossbar five line. This first call is from my step line to my crossbar five line. And uh, I let it ring a few times, and then I flash supervision and talk to the tape recorder. The first thing you'll hear is the sound of my step phone line when it's hung up. of supervision for you. This is September 1979, and the step you heard, this is a tape of that step in action making local calls. Anyway, let's get this recorded. Oh, I'm going to hang up now, and we will see whether there is timeout or not. There should be. Let's see. After having been on hook for 20 seconds, we hear the tick of the crossbar 5, cutting the incoming call from the step off. At this point, we're no longer connected to my crossbar 5 line. And those other noises we were just hearing are crosstalk from other phone calls. The tick of us getting cut off sounded on the tape like, boom. That was my phone patch that made it do that. Uh, in reality, it was just a soft, low-frequency tick. You may have noticed that my crossbar 5 has semi-modern ringtones. This pseudo-ESS-type ring for the crossbar 5 doesn't sound like regular ESS ring because in crossbar 5, the audible and the voltage ring that rings the bells have to be combined. While the phone is ringing in crossbar 5, you are actually connected to the phone line through attenuation. And therefore, it sort of sounds like a modern ring, but not quite because that 20 hertz component that actually rings the bell has to be there. On this next call, I dial a vacant number in the same crossbar 5 office. Again, this is within the same building. And the recording that I end up going to is, like so many things in the old network, talkable. So you'll hear the original ring trip. Then you'll hear a ringtone associated with the intercept trunk, which is just to keep the customer pacified till the recording comes on. Once the recording starts, you will hear me on my other line talking to you through the recording. And I believe there's even another caller on the line who we just hear hanging up.
a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this... That was someone else hanging up. We're sorry. You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number or try your call again. We're sorry. You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this... There's also a 1 or 1A ESS in this same building, and as you may know, the 1A ESS is an analog switch with digital control. Because it's an analog switch, the sound of a ringing tone must be generated by oscillators rather than by software, and as a result, there are individual pieces of equipment that produce the ringing sound. Every now and then, they would double up the ringtone trunks so that two callers at once could be on the same ringing tone equipment. And whenever that would happen, you could actually talk to the other caller. Often this would happen with ringing phones. Here's an example of it happening during the ringtone preceding a recording. We're going to call a non-working number in the ESS in this building. And you'll notice that it's very unbalanced during the ring. And shortly after that, you'll hear another caller hanging up with a cheep. Sorry, you have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number or try your call again. 919-836. We're sorry, you have reached a number that has been disconnected. That, of course, was the famous voice of Jane Barbie, the Time Lady. Time 2, 34. Temperature 45. And on this next call, we'll hear her again in one of her best performances ever as the AIS, the Automated Intercept System, developed by Western Electric in 1970, first installed in Long Island and then 15 other cities during the 70s. Around 1975, Autocron, the company for which Jane recorded, lost the contract, and the AISs installed after 1975 no longer had her voice. But uh, the one in Charlotte, North Carolina, did have her voice. I'm going to dial a vacant number within this step office. It's an 833 number, but I'm going to dial it as 233. The first digit, 8, is absorbed, and I can just as easily dial a 2 instead of an 8, so on this call I dial 233. The AIS trunks are extremely loud. So loud, in fact, that not only do you get a blasting announcement in your own ear, but you get crosstalk from other AIS calls. So during the quiet spaces in this call, listen in the background, and you'll hear other people getting various AIS reports, numbers that are changed, disconnected, whatever. That's because it was so loud that it was bleeding through from other trunks. <laughs> you have reached 833-9999 is not in service. Please check the number and dial again. 833-9999 is not in service.
Unfortunately, the intercept trunk has a timeout feature and won't allow us to sit there listening to the crosstalk forever. Several things about that. First of all, it's a 2600 controlled trunk, which means that if we had a blue box, we could, no, we couldn't make free calls, but we could get Jane to say that 555-1212 is not in service, and that's always fun. Also, the MF crosstalk we heard was seven digits, indicating that there are more than AIS trunks in this carrier system, because AIS MF sequences are eight digits. So some other regular phone calls also run alongside these AIS calls. Also, right before the ring starts and trips, you can hear the identifier tone, 5,800 hertz, which is used to identify the actual line that we're hitting, so the number can then be sent to AIS so it can give us the proper report. I'll replay that part of the call. Notice right before the clicks there's a very high-pitched tone. The number you have reached... Okay, you can turn the volume up again. I think I'm finished blowing your speakers out. Uh, from here on out the volume changes aren't quite as dramatic as that one. And on this next call we're going to dial a ringing number in the step. Well, you can certainly tell that call was recorded in the daytime with all that activity we were hearing bleeding through onto the ringtone. And uh, this next call also was recorded in the daytime. This one ends up on a busy signal. And sure enough, you can hear other callers on the line during the busy. time number is in this step-by-step -step office and you'll notice after I dial the last digit there's a pause and a few extra ticks as the special hunt group connector hunts for an available phone line <laughs> Since our beginning in 1905, Raleigh Federal Savings has served the community in every way we can. Time, 7.53. 
The voice doing the commercial on that is unfamiliar to me, but the time is being announced by Mary Moore, the person who preceded Jane Barbie as the Time Lady for Autocron. Mary Moore is famous for having done the time in places like Cleveland and New York. All right, now what happens in a multi-line hunt group when all the lines are busy? Well, the connector has to search through all the lines before it gives you a busy signal, and on this next call, listen to the searching noise that happens after we dial the last digit. <laughs> end there, that was me calling in from my other line and talking to you through the busy signal. Now here's what it sounds like when an even larger multi-line hunt group is busy. You'll hear the connector searching through more than one level of busy lines before finally giving up. <laughs> what it sounds like when it has to search a little while before finally finding an idle line. In the next segment, I'm going to dial some calls outside of this central office building. This is a fairly interesting local calling area because there are both Bell and Independence, and there still are a lot of old carrier systems. Also, we'll hear an unusual way of handling 411. May I ha have your number, please? Coming up next.